Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 484 of the podcast. And Bunny, I'm just going to tell you this right now. I am suffering from extreme insomnia. I have had four hours of sleep, but I still woke up early, went to church, fed my kids, finished writing the podcast, and I'm now recording the podcast because I'm a freaking professional. <laughs> but I'm also, like, right on the edge. So I'm really excited to record this episode so that I can then pass the F out. But just to let you know, I'm not 100% right now. Yeah. I am freaking exhausted. But anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pope on Film. The final season. Yes. The final season of this beloved, long-running, and seldom podcast. The Autumn Years. The Quiet Time. And now, the end is near. Although, that's too old now. I assume people have moved on. Now, I guess it would be, it's something unpredictable. But in the end, it's right. Yeah. Like uh, like uh, that cheesy thing at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine. So, if you count this episode, we have roughly five episodes left, and I figured after this episode, I'll pick the next movie, and after that, you can finish us off, give us a happy ending, with the last uh, four episodes being, well, three, being all you. This whole podcast is coming to a close soon, and so, as per the ironclad contract that I signed in 2014... I have been busy these last two weeks packing things up at the old Pope on Film Studios here in beautiful, sunny downtown Kent, Ohio. I've been busy packing up our movie library, our collection of vintage movie posters, freeing the Oompa Loompas we had locked in the basement, reclawing the cats, which is very difficult. Declawing, that's easy. I can do that for, you know, Ten bucks, a bottle of Jack, and no questions asked. But reclawing cats, that's difficult. And also, for the good of society, burning our, burning our mountains and mountains of Rayma Land horse erotica. Because it's for the best, Bunny. Yes. The planet's not ready for our uh, pages and pages of Ray Maland horse erotica. However, we have five episodes left, including this episode, so let's get right to the news. Buddy! Yes! Chick-fil-A is starting a streaming service. I, I have heard of this. Chick-fil-A is starting a freaking streaming service, which I think is ridiculous. Um, but I'm also kind of excited for it because finally we are one step closer to the gritty grimace origin story that we have all been waiting for. Yes, this is true. There, there's some positives to the idea of just everyone getting a streaming service. I mean, if Mr. Lobo and Cinema Insomnia has a streaming service. Then I guess Chick Fil A isn't that far. Yeah, away but from like, the realm. What of... is it going to be? They have, I mean, McDonald's. Yeah, they have the Grimace. They have Mayor McCheese. They have the Hamburglar. The fuck does Chick Fil A have? I would like to see like gritty reboots of all the McDonald's characters. Mayor McCheese can have a House of Cards type show, and uh, uh. The Hamburglar, Breaking Bad. Boom. Yeah. I'd be fine with that. Here's the thing, though. 
I was thinking Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A having a streaming service. When the world, when the world would would that be? Just some white guy screaming, "You're not gay!" into the camera. I don't know what Chick Fil A yeah. would. But then it hit me. I would see a show about those fucking cows. Yeah. It's really weird that there's a chicken fast food franchise whose mascot, whose mascots are cows desperate to stay alive. Yeah. I always found that to be fucking weird. So if they are able to put together a show that actually explains that, I would watch that. Now, what other restaurants could you see Besides McDonald's, what other restaurants could you see uh, doing a streaming service? I I would like to see Captain D's. Captain D's is that a sub place? No, it's a fish place. It's a fish place. It's it's basically Long John Silver's. Gotcha. Freaking so Long yeah, John I I Silver. would want to see. A drunk, most likely smelly fishing boat captain doing a show. Yeah, yeah. I Maybe. I want the behind the scenes at Captain D's. Maybe if every streaming, if every fast food franchise does get a streaming service. I would like to see a prequel focused on Carl Sr. Yeah. Yeah. There's the you thought. Know, what happened in Carl Sr.'s life that Carl Jr. is like, I'm going to spend my life making food that's the 30th most popular food in America. You know? Yeah. I would like to see that. I don't think Chipotle is ever going to have a streaming service because I don't think the technology is just right to be able to turn on a streaming service that gives you the shits. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I know one restaurant that is not getting a streaming service, Subway, because they will absolutely not be able to show any kids programming. True. Because your mind will immediately go to Jared. True, but I would really a... like to see Wendy's Wendy's only fans. Heck yeah! Like we'll be able to see some feet pics from Wendy's. I'd be down with that, Bunny. Uh, in other news, uh, I've been really successful lately. I just booked a commercial. Really? Yeah, it's for JD Wentworth. He's coming back. You know. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Well, JD Wentworth, A77 Cash Now. I'm a little bit worried about it, though. We will be filming the commercial at Arlington National Cemetery. Oh. And I asked JD Wentworth, um, I'm like, hey, should we be filming in Arlington National Cemetery? I thought that was a felony. And they said, yeah, uh, it is, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah. So a little bit worried about that, but I'm excited to have booked a commercial. I've got a great idea for a play, but Okay. Great idea for a play. Kind of like um, the General yeah. Grant cooking, cooking <coughs> book? Yes. That you were going to write uh, a play on? Yeah. So, so I've got a great idea for a play. It's kind of like Grease. Okay, it's very much like Grease. Okay, it's just Greece. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. All of the... Okay, so you do Greece the normal way. But when it comes to singing, every single solitary cast member sings like the guy from the B-52s. Ah. Because I was thinking, I hate Greece. But how could you do Grease in a way I would be okay watching it? You do it very serious, right down the board, exactly how it's supposed to be. But then when it's time to do a song, Summer Lovin', 
Happy a blab. Yeah. I did. I would. I'd watch that twice. Yeah. And I think that that could open up an entire thing. You do 12 Angry Men, but everyone's doing a Christopher Walken impression. Yeah. I would also, I'd watch that three times. I have always wanted, when it comes to Greece, I have Ooh. always wanted to see a version of Greece where as, it's, as you're watching it, a random cast member spontaneously combusts. Ooh, okay. I'd be down with that. I want to do Bye Bye Greasy from just the like, last season of the like, movies. What, what do you think, Rizzo? And you look over and Rizzo just exploded. I would be all I would be all right with that. Just put just put two landmines on the set. Yeah. That would be exciting. That's something that they probably do in the Battle Royale universe. Yes. So, Bunny, I saw a movie in theaters this past week. I saw the psychological horror thriller drama Blink Twice, starring okay. Channing Tatum, or as my wife likes to call him, Channing Chatham. It, it, I saw the preview like twice and it gave me a bit of Midsommar vibes like, oh, here's this billionaire. He owns an island. He's inviting people to come party with them. Everything's fine. How many days have we been here? I don't know. But I love it. I'm having such a great time. Everything's great. But then things start happening. And I'm like, okay, well, this might be interesting. Here's the first warning for you. There's a trigger warning before the credits roll. Okay. Informing you that a good portion of this movie has to deal with sexual assault. The twist of this is all sexual assault, and it's really fucked up. And there's a part of the movie that's just. <laughs> That's kind of messed up because when eventually when you realize the twist, it's really fucked up. And there's a there's a Epstein niche to the movie that they don't let you know in the previews. You know, like when normal people say, hey, I'm going to go see this movie. The previews look great. And then they go to the movie and they're like, oh, fuck, it's a musical. They didn't yeah. tell me that in the preview. Well, blink twice. The main plot of it has to do with uh, abusing women, and it's 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 fucked up. And they should inform people about that before you sit down and buy it. Before ticket. you buy a ticket, yeah, yeah, it's kind of fucked up. But I did like it. You know, when it comes to movies where women are ard, the revenge has to really kick ass. Yeah. And once you realize that the R is what's going on, the revenge does come pretty quick after that, and it's pretty kick ass, and I like that. You know yeah, who was yeah, in the movie? Like, well, I mean, but that's what I just don't like about revenge movies in general, like yes. Last House on the Left or I Spit on yep. the Grave. I mean, yep. yes, to get that to that end is very satisfying. You know, but, but the fucking muck you have to crawl through to get there. Yeah. You like know, Andy I'd, I'd rather not. Yeah. But the movie, crazy ass cast Channing Tatum, Kyle McLaughlin, um, Christian Slater, Gina Davis. She's still alive. I don't know in the. Yeah, I don't know when the last time was. I saw Gina freaking Davis in something. It, that blew my mind. Holy shit, Gina Davis is in this. She looked good. She was acting great. She was Gina Davis. Wait, wait, wait a second. No, no, no. You can't say those two things okay. in the same breath. She was acting fine. Okay, she was okay, acting that's as better. Gina davis -ly as you ever expect Gina Davis to act. Yes. But I was really surprised. It, it, it was a good movie, but everyone needs to be warned about what this movie is really about. It's kind of fucked up. Yes. It's like seeing, like when I saw the previews for uh, 
Tim Burton, Sweeney Todd, and it's like, fuck, they're not letting anyone know this is a musical. People are going to get fucked. It, there are some women who will go and see uh, the movie Blink Twice only because Channing Tatum's in it and he's hot, and then they're going to get absolutely effed in the A by what this movie is really about. And so I just want to warn people, uh, the trigger warning should be even before you decide to pay a ticket for this movie. Yeah. And Bunny, there is, of course, my personal life. I have had a busy week. Oh, I have a I have a busy week coming up. So today I got to record the podcast, and then on Tuesday I'm taking Eleanor out for a special thing, and then on Wednesday night I have one of my biggest shows of the year. Yeah, a college. That's uh, East Central University in Ada, Oklahoma. It's kind of a cool college town here in Oklahoma. And I performed there last November as part of a drag show. And I made such an impression on them that the college has invited me back. Not the drag show, just me. And I feel kind of good about that. So I'm doing my own uh, one-woman show this Wednesday night. And tickets are $5 if you're not a student. But if you're a student or a professor or a teacher or a faculty member and you have a valid ID, you get in for free. And they specifically scheduled my show when classes are happening. And so it's this Wednesday night. And I'm hearing from a bunch of people. It, it's going to be a, a packed show, a big show, a great show. I'm super excited. And then the next day on Thursday, I have a super important meeting. And then on Saturday, I'm performing at a Latin Pride event, which makes sense because, as you know, Bunny, yeah, I care so much about my culture. Yes, you do. Representation matters, and so I am such a Hispanic. Oh wait, that's I. I did the uh, Italian. I did a hand gesture, but it's more Italian, but. Yeah, I'm 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 really successful right now. Sure, Bunny, I'm I'm super successful. I'm going places, rising star like Michael Florwax. But you know what? I'm just so humble about it. Which is which is which of course is what you love about me. Oh, of course. There's one thing that you love about me. It's how super humble I'm being, despite being so successful. I'm not letting the success get to me, Bunny. I'm still I'm still Jenny from the block. Yeah. True. I haven't changed. And I'm using my newfound success to give back, Bunny. I'm not sure if you realize this. I just opened a school. Did you? Yes. I opened a school in a very poor, very neglected nation called hold on, I wrote it down. Sack Ra. Mentos. Oh. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's well, Mentos. So have you gotten your passport? Oh, yes. In fact, in the early 2000s, <laughs> I was a missionary who was sent to this sad war-torn nation yes. of Sacramento. And at first, of course, the uh, primitives, the natives in Sacramento, were, they were hesitant of the newcomer. And that was to be expected. But I Jane good all that shit. I stayed there, stayed in the trees with binoculars, you know, studying the Sacramentosians. And eventually, the primitives of Sacramentos. Yeah. They made me their chiefess. Aha. Uh -huh. So I was really I was really brought in. And I wanted to give back to that community, is what my publicist told me to say. And so I recently broke ground on a new school there because if there's one thing that I learned from my time as a Sacramentosian, it's that there is a big homelessness problem there. A huge homelessness problem. Uh, you go to their downtown, you go to their town square, it, you, it, you see so many, a lot, I mean a lot of poor, sad, homeless llamas just wander the streets, they never get a chance to, to have an education. Because I feel that all llamas should, 
should have the chance to go to school. And so this is this is how you get there. Just broke ground. We're building at a rapid rate. We're very excited. So this is how you get there. So you go to Sacramento. You go downtown to their little town square, you know, yeah. to their gazebo. And you go to the Johnny Rockets. Not that Johnny Rockets, the other Johnny Rockets. Oh, of course. No, 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 not that one. The other, other one. Oh, nobody goes to the other one. No, you go to the other, other, other Johnny Rockets in downtown Sacramento. And then this is what you do. You take uh, Las Are you Are you Toma. starting a school or are you selling crack? No, I'm starting a school, Bunny. Okay. So you go to the other, other, other Johnny Rockets in Sacramento. The, the, the and crack then, Johnny Rockets. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. But then, but that's not where the school is. You get there, and then you take Las Palmas. Take Las Palmas to Colorado. Take Colorado down to Pico. And that's how you get to the Lama School. Simple as that. Okay. That took a really long time to get to a pretty uh bunny. Can you your camera just went out? Okay, you can still hear me though? I can still hear you. Okay, let me see what I can do about this freaking camera situation. Dang it. Uh okay. So there I am. I mean, there you are. Where's my freaking camera? Uh start video. Dang. There you go. Okay. Dang it! Okay. Let me try again. Then you touch Start something. Good. There you go. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. We're good. We're good. But still, despite all of my sass, success and my accolades, I'm still laser focused on this podcast, Bunny, because the world's eyes and ears and uh, pancreas is, are on this podcast, Bunny. Yes. And with our unique blend of laughter and tears, I'm certain that when the historians finally get around to writing their textbooks, that the ending of the Pope on film will go down as one of the most influential moments of American history. Oh, it's it, it, it's going to get more viewers than MASH. Yeah, because I think that like when the historians are like, what are the most important things in American history? I would say number one, of course, would be Magic Johnson's cameo in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Number two, of course, would be Benghazi. What did Hillary Clinton know? Yeah. Number three would, would be the Pope on film end. You yes. know, finally, after a decade, the Pope on Film podcast, everyone's favorite podcast that they've never heard of is ending. And number nine, I guess, would be, I don't fucking know, 9-11. I yeah. guess. No, wait. Number, okay, number four would be the Humpty Dance. All right, stop the what Humpty you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. I look funny. But you are making money, see? So your world, I hope you're ready for me. So gather round. I'm the new fool in town, and my sound's laid down by the underground. I drink up all the Hennessy you've got in your shelf, so just let me introduce myself. My name is May Lynn. <laughs> I know more of the Humpty Dance than I thought. Okay, so number four would be the Humpty Dance, and number five can be fucking 9-11. No, wait. Number five should be the release of the Star Wars candy where the popsicle is Jar Jar's mouth. You remember that? Yeah. And so you so like in order to eat a candy, you've got to make out with the worst Star Wars character. George yeah. Lucas okayed this. I find that fascinating. And now people are like, oh, okay, okay, why. okay, okay, yeah. Worst Star Wars character, but best fucking lover. Of course. Of course. And Face it. And, making out with Jar Jar to get candy 
wasn't that bad. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, hey, I've had weirder Friday nights. So, number five would be the release of the Star Wars candy where you're French kissing Jar Jar Banks. Actually, number five will be a tie between the release of the Star Wars candy where you're making out with Jar Jar Banks and that one vine. Ten minute warning. Ten minute warning. And that one vine, you know what I'm talking about? I'm in my mom's car. Vroom, vroom. Get out me car. So, so both of those would be number five. Number six is going to be uh, 9-11. Oh, wait. Scott Steiner's math promo from WCW. Okay, so that's six. <laughs> the, greatest, the greatest wrestling promo of all time, because Scott Steiner is like a freaking idiot and doesn't know math. So okay. number six. No, there's got to be Go Go Power Presidente. Oh yes, well that's that has to be seven. So it, no, nine eleven can't be seven. Uh, actually, number seven is also going to be a tie because number seven is going to be Go Go Para Presidente and the Time Bunny when you went viral, having gone to a protest, and while everyone else has big huge signs, you have a small whiteboard. That read, just don't. That of course went viral, and you ended up becoming like America's guy standing in front of the tanks at Tiananmen Square. Yes, yes. Just I don't. am Greta Thunberg. Yeah, yeah. Just don't sweat the nation. It was the opposite of Nike. Just do it. Eh, just don't. Just don't. So number eight will have to be uh, nine eleven. Fuck. Okay, never mind. Albert B. Fall and the Teapot Dome scandal yeah. has to be eight. It has to be on the list. So number nine will be it can't be it can't nine eleven can't be number nine because that has to be the season finale of Newhart. That was a big fucking deal. Yeah, big ass deal. And you know, Bonnie, I tried really hard to get to book Suzanne Plachette for our last episode. Yeah. But apparently she went and died, which I think is fucking rude. Rude ass. She she did? Yeah. Yeah, she died. So, like, damn. She, I'm pretty sure she died just so that she wouldn't have to be on the podcast, which I didn't think is, which I don't think is cool. That's but, rude. That's, that's but really rude. eight months ago, Bunny, I started talking to Bob Newhart's publicist. And barring any unforeseen circumstances, Newhart's a lock for the finale. Yes! Aha! Uh -huh. I mean, as, as long as no, nothing happens from now until then. With Bob you know, I haven't really been paying attention yeah. to the news, but I'm sure everything's fine. Bob Newhart, final episode. It, you know, get your, get your tickets now. So that has to be number nine. So number 10 will be 9-11. No, number 10 is the opening of America's first Dan Flashes. It's a clothing store. The patterns are very complicated. Yeah. So a boom, 9-11 is number 11. That's convenient. I, mm. I planned that whole thing. It, it's perfect. You love it. It's amazing. So that's the list. We're number three on the list. Of the 11 most important things to ever happen. Yeah. I'm okay with 9-11 being in 11th place. Because, like, who even, who, even, who even knows when that happened? Yeah. Who even knows when 9-11 happened? 9-11 is serious, though, and you can't joke about it. Which is why I have to publicly denounce the rap group Public Enemy for their song, 9-11 is a joke. <laughs> How could you? How could you make fun of 9-11 like that? <clears throat> Not cool. Flava Flav? So anyway, I wrote that when I was very energetic and it had a, enough sleep. Uh-huh. And I'm so happy that I wrote all that out because I am fucking exhausted. I am downing coffee and soda just to stay awake for this episode because I'm really suffering from insomnia. But oh, so what's this about What's this about next week's show? We, we were either okay, doing okay. it next yes, week or... Yes, 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 yes. Okay. 
let's talk about that. Because uh, we're still doing every other week for the podcast. But two weeks from now is Q and Maxwell's birthday. Yeah. And uh, I talked it over with them. They absolutely, positively, 100% will not allow me to record the podcast on their birthday. Okay. So we can either do it on the 8th, which is a week from now, or we wait until the 22nd, which is three weeks from today. Either way, I still want to stay on our schedule. So uh, I have an episode scheduled for the 29th. So it's either we do an episode next week or we do two episodes on the 22nd and 29th at the end of the month. It's up to you. We will prob we will either way we will end up doing two back to back episodes. Yeah, but week. but but see I'm also looking at October 6th there and that would be the perfect last show. Oh, okay. I thought this was going to be the fifth episode, but fuck it. Okay. So. Because that that is the actual date we started. It was my birthday. Okay, October then how 6th. about this? How about this? We do two more episodes on the 22nd of September and then the 6th of October. Okay. You down with that? So we're doing this episode, then the twenty second, and then, and the then we finish it up on the sixth. Okay. You down with that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you want to pick the next two movies then? Ah uh, no, I'll just pick the last one. Okay. Then I'll pick the next one because, and that's good because I already have something planned. So okay, two more episodes left. This is the last. This is the third to last episode. Yes. This is exciting. This is thrilling. Join us on the shocking season finale. Series finale of the Pope on Film podcast. Who will live? Who will die? Who knows? Yes. Very exciting. But that is coming up in the weeks to come. Uh, right now, what we need to do, we need to take a break and we need to talk about this week's movie, which... Bunny, I will need your help because I don't know Buffy the fucking Vampire Slayer. Oh, you don't need to know a lot about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but... But I do know a lot about being trans, and I feel that I... It kind of feels weird saying this, but I feel like this movie is for trans people. <laughs> I, this is a trans allegory for trans people. And so I hoped you liked it. If you didn't, eh, it's too bad. It's kind of not for you. No, I like this movie. I like this movie quite okay. a lot. I, 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 yeah. But let's get to that after the break. Maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film podcast after this. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. This is the outro. Do 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 do. It's an original song. I wrote it myself. Yes. And then Johnny Carson stole it from me. Went back in time and stole the piece. And I don't think that that's okay. I'm thinking of going back in time and suing him, but that gets complicated. Do 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 do. Do 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 and cut. Right. 